Hey. What up? Um, make sure when you grab a barbell, it's a rogue one. So one of the ones from the CrossFit rack over there. Yep. And make sure all the weights you have are rogue weights. And we'll check before we leave. And that none of them have grenades on it. They don't have grenades on it because those are megs. And we ain't renting out meg stuff. Touch a barbell again. Yeah. So when, like, when we first started renting stuff out, I was like, I'm not going to rent barbells. We're only going to be closed for a couple weeks. But now that it's, it's like six weeks of closure, I'm like, well, I don't want people not having barbells for six weeks. I'm hoping that the April 30th date that they gave us um, is the last day we're closed. Um, but I don't know. I just heard last night that one of my friend's gyms, that's 10 minutes from here, is closing. I think we're going to try to pick up some of her equipment. Huh? Completely. They're not reopening after this because of this. That was my, yeah. Um, and so we'll probably try to pick up some of their athletes and some of their equipment, not to like try to athlete poach or anything, but like him, help out, like give him some place to go. Um, babe, can you go in there? There's a the black marker that's in there somewhere is the new black marker. And I don't know how it got in there, but I saw it in there yesterday. Yep. <laughs> Huh? <clears throat> no, we're we're still. Hello. Hi, sorry, I have all your bills. I totally forgot to bring them in to make the door block. Uh, if you roll around back, the garage door is open. Oh, okay, all right. I'll and I'll stay again. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Yeah. So it's it's we've only we've effectively lost zero members because we lost we had four people freeze. But we had um, four people pay extra memberships to cover that. Oh, that's not it. I don't know where it's at then. Okay. No, I can just do, I can just do back, black or blue. I don't know. I can just do this. It's fine. I'm, I'm not really doing a ton of. Word. Cool. Appreciate it. That's Lincoln.
Ross, you gonna come in and join us for some bodybuilding? Bodybuilding? Don't drop an empty barbell, don't break the plates. I mean, you're, you're not really gonna mess up the plates, just don't like, like literally just don't scratch the barbell. Like that's, yeah. The, the plate, the, like with the 10s, or, I don't know what you grab, but like 10s and 15s, uh, just don't drop them. Um, that, I mean, same rules apply out there as in here. They're, they're meant to be thrown around. The, the, they're also, they're also five years old at this point. So, if they break, they break. Yep. Everything, everything's on back order. I tried to get her sandbag, and I can't even get it. And that's. Sam, you're more than welcome to join us too. We're under we're under five people, so we can do what we want. Yeah, you can't have more than five people. So if you wanted to do the pump sesh stuff, it's just some PT bodybuilding work. On Tuesdays. Okay. Doesn't fucking listen. Hey, Sean. Hey, I think we miscommunicated on time zones because this class goes from 12 to 1 my time, which means I'd be free at noon your time. Sorry, I, I, I thought I had communicated that, um, but I, again, this is, I didn't, I did not, I did not see that invite. Sorry, I'm, I've been trying to fix things um, through this all day. We had a, a implosion of our Zoom meetings um, as far as one of our guys doing um, something similar on our end. Um, so we, Okay. Cool. Yeah, and that, that'll be right after the, uh, the class at, at uh, noon, your guys' time. All right. Cool. Cool. Sorry about that. All right. Like. All right. We got Maddie. We got Sarah. Howdy, folks. We're gonna get started here in a little bit. I'm, just mixing up what I call my go-go juice, um, which is uh, just some beet powder, some creatine, because you know, you gotta stay jacked during the quarantine, um, and some stuff called Kratom. Use it for some nerve pain stuff that I experienced because of paralysis. 
um, what I call it my go-go juice. Um, guys, if you are here, um, Sarah and Maddie, and then who else we got jumping in? Andrea, um, pump us stuff, things you might need if you have them. It's always a good idea to have a band. If you have some kind of small band, that's awesome. Um, if you have a dumbbell or a set of dumbbells, that also would be great. Otherwise, an odd object would be really good to have. Um, this is a weird one. If you have something that you can hook, like lay on your stomach and hook your heels underneath, like a couch or something, that's going to come in handy. Um, sandbag works too. I'll, um, if you have someone in the house with you that can hold your feet, you'll see why in a second. If you don't, we'll figure it out. We got some different variations here. It'll be just fine. Um, other than that, I think you should be uh, pretty good to go with just that. Yeah. Um, we're going to play around with some fun stuff. Um, I was pulling to create these classes. I've been pulling the, um, the coaching staff. So like Stouty and Jen and Steph and uh, uh, Johnny and, and Logan and those guys and kind of figuring out uh, what, what we've really beat up that week, what feels sore because um, my legs never feel, feel sore. Uh, so I never know what, when we beat up legs too much. So I pulled that. So we're going to, we're going to do uh, a lower extremity and ab pump sessions. So we didn't get to do abs last week. I'm going to uh, spend a little time talking about why I think people train abs wrong um, for things like CrossFit and lifting. I think people uh, train abs for marathons instead of training abs for strength and actual movement. Um, so we're going to take a little time to mess with that today. We got, we got a few minutes. I'm just... I'm just talking, just chit chatting. Um, you guys will probably have some friends on here. I'm gonna, if you wanna mute yourself, go ahead and um, mute yourself. I'm gonna unmute everyone at first though. That way anyone that wants to chat or say hi to people they haven't seen in a little while from the gym, make it a little social till we, till we get started. Hey Kevin, this is Jen. I um, didn't hear what you said we would need. I heard hook your feet to something and- oh, no, no worries, no worries. Um, so like if you have a set of dumbbells or a barbell, awesome. Um, okay. We're gonna use those. Um, I have a set up for like odd object and, and, and dumbbell, but if you have barbell, that'd be great. Um, a band is always a good idea. Like if you have like a resistance band, awesome. Good call to have that as well. Um, and then, um, if you have something, we're gonna, we're gonna do, it's called a push-up GHR. It's a variation of GHR. We use our arms a little bit to aid since most of us don't have a GHD machines at home. Um, so we're gonna do a, what's called a push-up GHR. In order to do that, you have to have your feet hooked underneath something or someone holding your feet down. Um, so if you have anything to do that with, that would be, um, that would be killer. If you don't, there's different variations. They don't work quite as well. Um, but there's different variations we can in fact do. Okay, thank you. No, no biggies. Um, okay. I found this in that front pocket right there. No, it's fine. Start here in a minute, guys. Um, how's everyone feeling from last week? Was the was the assertion from the coaches that everyone's legs are a little beat up pretty pretty accurate, or is everyone like, no, my shoulders are dead? Because I do have a shoulder version of this for today. So if your shoulders are really beat up and you'd rather do that, then that's great. Um, if your if your legs are um, beat up, then uh, just follow along with what we're doing. Perfect. Anything, anything, Bueller? Um, both Bueller. are both beat up. Yeah. Okay. I'll just do whatever. Uh, let, let's tackle the legs, Jen, and then okay. um, I can I can shoot you the uh, the upper body version of this if you want to, or even better, do this today for your legs, 
And then tomorrow we have the mobility class with Shannon at, I think, 3.30 your guys' time. So you guys okay. can hop in on that for your upper body a little bit. Um, okay. I figure it's pump sesh. A tank top is appropriate. Uh, Shannon said it was okay for me to wear a tank top. Apparently it's not always socially acceptable for guys. I dig it. <laughs> so, Shannon, Sean reached out. Sean, Sean thought we were doing, I was doing the meeting with him at 12 instead of at 1. So he has to bump that back. He's like, I sent you an invite. I'm like, I didn't look at the invite, dude. So I, I, I'm still same for us. He just, I think he's a little perturbed. Yeah, because I didn't look at the Zoom in of uh, the Instagram invite meeting invite with him properly. He just he didn't listen when I told him I had something to do at noon. The Instagram live I'm doing at noon or at one. I said noon his time. He thought I said noon our time. He's in California. All right. Huh? No, I'm doing it once, so. You just change it. Change it back. Good. All right, guys, let's start this pump session. So I have this planned out to be um, like 45 to 50 minutes. Uh, that way there's a little time between now and the uh, the, the class at about 1.30. Um, so we're not trying to like rush over everything. Um, so we'll see how close we can keep it to that. Here, here's the deal um, for those of you guys who didn't join us last week. So the pump sesh is, is actually what I call a hypertrophy and joint health um, with, some, with some blood pump added in. And the whole purpose of this class is, yeah, it's a little hypertrophy. Yeah, you'll, you'll, get, you'll feel nice and jacked after we get done. But the big part is, I'm going to mute everyone now. Um, the big part is, is that you're going to, should feel better after this, because our whole point of this is we're going to be doing some things that build muscle, but also build muscle in a very specific way to create healthier joints. Um, and also that, that blood pump, that pump you feel from, from doing some of this bodybuilding stuff that we're going to do um, is actually, the purpose of it is what I call blood pump or, or, or um, uh, just flooding the muscle with blood. Um, and the reason we're doing that is because it'll aid in recovery, it'll make you feel better. So you should, the next day after this, feel better than you did today. Um, and so the basic setup of these classes is we're going to do a, a, what I call hypertrophy and joint first. And you'll recognize this because it's going to be more like uh, somewhere between um, 8 to 12 rep type stuff. Sometimes a little closer to 20 reps, but not always. And it's going to feel like you're actually like building some strength. Whereas then when we get to the blood pump stuff, it's going to be things like pulsing and, and quick movement. And um, on this side of things, uh, on, the, on the blood pump stuff, it's not... I want you moving quickly. It's not like trying to move slow and controlled. Like this is what we're trying to just, just jack through and try to still go range of motion, but move quickly through it. So we get a lot of blood into that muscle tissue. So today we're going to do lower extremity. Um, once we get done with this, we're going to go into our, um, which is going to be some staggered stance, um, dumbbell RDLs. We're going to do some push-up GHRs. We'll demo those in a second. When we get to the blood pump stuff, um, we're gonna do some close stance sissy squat pulses. I'll tell you how to do those without a band at your house for sissy squats or Spanish squats, whatever you wanna call them. Um, and then um, some, some staggered stance demo deadlifts. Um, you guys, if you guys were here last week, you guys got to play around with some demo deadlifts. We're gonna play around with some variations of those because I love them, okay? Then we're gonna go into strength. Strength is set up a little differently. We're gonna train our, our midline the way I feel um, abs and midline should be trained. It's a little different than most people do. Uh, most people train uh, like their abs, like it's a marathon. It's re usually really high rep. It's usually like, I want to feel that blood pump in our abs. You guys already know how to do that with your abs. The problem with that is, is like, um, let's put it this way. You wouldn't train for a hundred meter sprint by running a 5k. And that's what, that's how people think they should train their abs. They do a whole bunch of reps, whole bunch of reps, and they expect their abs to be able to con contract maximally under load. It's not the way it works. All right, so we're training the wrong systems. So what I'm going to teach you guys here um, with the midline that we do in the pump sesh is a little bit of strength training where we're going to do very, very heavy abdominal movements, um, some different stuff that you're probably not used to in a different way, um, and, and really teach your abs to contract maximally under load and stabilize. So we're going to have two sections here. It's going to be strength and it's going to be isometric. So the isometrics is going to be, again, a little bit different because generally what's going to happen is we're going to either have a full isometric where like nothing's moving 
or we're going to have a partial isometric where our hip or a different joint is moving, but our abdominals need to stay, um, stay um, rigid. And we're going to do it sometimes under load, sometimes not under load. So today we're going to do some banded um, overhead hollows if you have it. If not, we'll play around with some different hollow variations. And then um, if you guys have never played around with the reverse hyper, you probably don't have one. Most people don't. We're gonna, I'm going to show you how to do a different variation of a reverse hyper leg swing that you can do at home. This is phenomenal for like if you have low back problems, if you have um, tight hip flexors, stuff like that. Uh, I think the reverse hyper is a very underutilized machine. Um, and most people, again, train their abs, but they never train their, their low back or their um, transverse and or, or dominus and, and, and obliques. So we're going to get into trying to train that a little bit. Um, it should be fun. You should enjoy it. You should learn some stuff. And it's also going to make you feel super jacked when we're done. Uh, any, any questions, comments, or concerns on this? Go ahead and throw them in the chat. I mean, if you're new to this class and you, you didn't get to do it last week, you don't know 100% um, what you're getting into. It should be fun, but feel good. We're good. We're good. Cool. All right. So here's the deal. Uh, Shannon's with me today. She's going to demonstrate a lot of this stuff for us because, um, well, she can. Um, and then we'll, we'll hit it and then we'll demonstrate the next movements and then we'll hit it and then we'll move on. And then the, the very end of the class, I'm going to try to end each class, um, regaining some range of motion. So a lot of the stuff is going to cause you guys to kind of shorten up that range of motion because we're, we're, we're pumping you up. We're going to do some uh, slow, solid, full range of motion movement at the very end to make things feel better and get back to a full range of motion before we get out of here. Cool. Thumbs up. All right. Here's the deal. This, this first one. Um, all you're going to need is either a, a barbell, an odd object, a set of dumbbells, anything like that, and then something to lock your feet down on, like a, a bench. Uh, well, benches are a little, little too high. Um, like dumbbells, sandbags, a couch, anything you can hook your heels underneath. So I'm going to give you guys a minute to grab those things. I'm just going to hold your heels down. What thing? Oh, yeah, you can. Yeah, go for it. Yep. Um, guys, the dumbbell should be, I mean, as heavy as you feel like you can move through uh, 10 per leg fairly quickly, like stay moving, um, but it shouldn't be super light if you can avoid it. So let, try to get decently heavy. If you want to grab some like 25s or 30s, I think you should be okay. Now, the staggered stance RDLs, you're going to do 10 per leg, and all that really means is, if you guys can see, Shannon, is that one foot, if this is my front foot, my back toes are at my front foot's heels. So it's just a, a, a short, you don't need to hook them yet. This is, this is for the RDLs. So just, just here, and then like a normal deadlift stance, and you're just going to go down and then pull yourself back up. And you're going to do 10 of those this, this direction, and then you're going to switch legs 10 to the other. Okay. Big thing here, keeping back flat, getting a good position. Now the push-up GHRs, I'm gonna have you do them with me holding first so you can really show them. Okay. Is you're gonna lay down in like a flat body position like you're gonna do a push-up, but your knees are gonna stay on the ground. You're gonna push yourself up to a vertical position. So the whole point is to try to pull yourself up through your ankles or through, through your hamstrings. So if I'm sitting here and I'm, and I'm helping her out, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold her ankles here and she's gonna fall, fall to the ground as slow as she can and then push yourself back up to that position. And then fall to the ground as slow as she can, and push yourself back up. All right, and that's the whole purpose of those, is to try to get those hamstrings engaged. Um, so if you have something to hook your feet underneath, if you have something to hold your feet, that's what we're looking for. If you don't have any of that, if you just have something where you can, um, so she's gonna do it this way, where she hooks her feet into the whiteboard. Same thing, and she's gonna fall down, as slow as she can and then prop, prop herself back up. Okay, I'll hold the whiteboard and you hold the feet. But whatever you have to hold yourself down. If you don't have any of that, just try to really lower yourself down really slow and push yourself back as fast as possible. Try really to pull with the hamstrings as much as possible on these. So the way this is gonna work is you're gonna do 10 RDLs per leg the first minute. The next minute you're going to do eight of those push-up GHRs. You should start to feel pretty good in those leggies, okay? Any questions on those, comments, concerns? So you're gonna do uh, 10 on one leg, 10 on the other in the first minute for the RDLs, and then eight total in the second minute. Questions, comments, concerns, everyone feeling pretty good? What's up, Crystal? Um, what if I can't go on my knees like that? Is there something else I can do, just regular push-ups or? 
Um, so the whole point of this is hamstrings. So if you have, do you have a band there at your place? Yep. Um, if you can attach your, your band to something, lay on your stomach and then just bend your knee as much as you can safely. That's all yep. we're trying to, that's all we're trying to do is get the okay. hamstrings pumping. Okay. Okay. Make sense? Thank you. Yep. Yeah. The other way you can do it, if you don't have a band, um, Crystal, if you don't want to get the set up, you just take the dumbbell in between your feet. And this is for anyone that doesn't have anything switch between uh, the hook their feet underneath. And we're just going to pull up and back down slowly. So that's another way of doing this. If you don't have someplace to hook your feet or you don't have a band, but 10 RDLs per leg, then you're going to do eight push up GHRs the next minute um, or whatever variation you can do. And we're going to do this for eight minutes. Okay. Let's start with those RDLs. So go ahead and grab your dumbbells. And we're gonna start in 10 seconds, 10 per leg, 10 good movements per leg. It's heavy as you can keep in your hands and still move well. And three, two, one, and go. So make sure that one foot is farther back than the other thing, toes to heel on that. Make sure that chest is staying up, like you're trying to lead down with your back. So Emily, do me a favor, try to keep that chest up a little bit. Don't let it, don't let yourself round forward. Really think about big chest there. And if you only get down that far, you only get down that far. Range of motion isn't as important as, as keeping that back flat on this. That's 10 per leg and then rest. So Scott, really think about trying to keep that chest up. Don't lead, don't lead down with the top of the, the, your chest. Think about leaning, uh, going down with your rib cage. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to push up GHRs in three, two, one. And those hamstring curls or push up GHRs or whatever you got, go ahead and knock that out. And it's only eight of these. Is that 45 enough? Nope. Really control down, slow as possible, push yourself back up. And as much as you can, think about trying to throw yourself back up and pulling yourself up with your hamstrings. The less you can walk it back and the more you can pull up with your hamstrings, the better. You're still doing something. Yeah. Really focus on making those hamstrings work. Yeah, yeah, the guys got about 10 seconds. We're going back to those RDLs. No matter where you're at in reps, let's go ahead and switch on back in three, two, one, and go. Knock out those RDLs. Guys, that stagger isn't huge. Remember, like if this is my heel, I want my toes right at it. So it's a very, very, if you check out Shannon's feet, it's not a huge stagger. It's very slight, keeping that back nice and flat. Knocking out 10 quick ones. We're moving quick on these. We're not trying to move slow. Very nice, guys. Keep moving through it. Go ahead and... Breathe, breathe, breathe. Get through 10 and 10 each leg. You got about 15 seconds. We're gonna switch into those GHRs in three, two, one. And go ahead and knock out GHRs, guys. We'll say eight or 45 seconds worth, whatever comes first. That's looking good. Really think about squeezing gut, button, legs on the way down, controlling as much as you can, and then popping back up. Go 
Go ahead, and we're at 15 seconds before we switch back. Go ahead and relax on these GHRs, guys. Let's go back to the dumbbells. We're gonna do some more RDLs in five seconds. Three, two, one, and go. Short stagger, big chest. Try to keep that back super flat. That weight should be pushing back into your heels. Really think about reaching your butt back on these. Should really feel like a stretch or a big contraction in that backside. If you feel like your toes are what's causing balance at the front, you're going too far forward. Think about trying to pull yourself back. All that weight should be in the heels. Uh, we got 20 seconds, guys. Knock through those uh, RDLs and get ready for more GHRs. Going to those GHRs in five, three, two, one, and go. Remember, this is all about them hammies, so try to make those hamstrings work as much as you can. Do a big push up and try to pull yourself back up. You should got, we should have a pad, I'm sorry. That's on me. We guys got about 30 seconds. All right, got 15 seconds, guys. Let's start transitioning over back to those RDLs for the very last time. Three, two, one, and RDLs for me, guys. Same, same, let's keep those butt pushing back, weight should be in those heels, really getting those hamstrings to work here. Got about 20 seconds, we're going to our last round of GHRs. Here we go, three, two, one. Let's knock out those push-up GHRs. Mm-hmm. Stay moving guys, keep those hamstrings tight, try to control the descent and really pull yourself back up with the hamstrings. Guys, when you finish that, go ahead and relax. Shake those legs out. How's everyone feeling with that? Everyone doing all right? Feel like their legs are getting a little bit of get a work in there? Yes. Okay, cool. Should feel pretty good after that with your legs moving. So that's more what you're gonna find with, um, maybe not always an EMOM, but like the hypertrophy and joint health. We'll end up doing a ton of reps on something. We'll end up doing a, a lot of reps on something, but it'll generally be some kind of like unilateral, making sure the joint's moving properly, getting things set properly, um, or targeting a specific, um, piece of muscular tissue we want to get a little bit bigger. We could always use stronger hamstrings and stronger glutes, so we'll end up doing that quite a bit. Um, 
if there are no questions on the, uh, the joint health stuff, now this next part, this is the blood pump. This is, this is what we're looking for for blood flow. So this is the one where we're gonna try to move a little bit quicker and it's gonna feel like there's a big burn in the muscle tissue. That's perfect, that's what we're looking for. Um, what we're gonna do is, is, is basically a really shortened range of motion sissy squat, um, which if you guys were here last week, you had kind of got an intro to. I figured out a way to do this fairly well if you don't have a lot at your, at your place. And we're gonna do some uh, staggered stance demo. So the same staggered stance, very similar to um, the, the RDLs, but now we're only gonna go for a partial range of motion. Think knee and up. So it's gonna be really quick. It has to be a really snappy hip, almost like you're doing a kettlebell swing. We're gonna keep the dumbbells close or barbell close or whatever you have and just snap the hips open. All right, um, so the sissy squat or the, or the Spanish squat, um, whatever you want to call it. If you don't have a rig and a band, which is what we're normally going to use, what you're going to do is take a chair or a bench and put it up against something like the rig. Like, so we can move this. Um, I want to move it just slightly weird. So it's all the way up against it so it doesn't flip. And I'll push it back. And what you're going to do is put your knee up against the back end of it. And you're just going to sit back as far as you can. What we're trying to do is keep our chest up and um, our knees, our shins vertical. All right, chest up, shins vertical. And this is gonna be a huge burn on, thanks timer. Uh, this is gonna be a huge burn on the quad. If you wanna do this with weight, just grab like a dumbbell or a kettlebell, awesome. I would suggest doing this first round without, just so you can feel what, it, uh, get what it feels like. But all we're trying to do is have something to push up against so we don't, uh, we don't fall backwards on this. She's gonna go up against the wall a little bit. Is that gonna work? Flip it long ways and go on the end. So if you have a bench, if you flip it the long ways like this, and then you back your back your uh, the knee joint up against it, this is a great way of doing it. All right. And so what's going to happen is you're going to go from just above, just above where you're going to squat to, to almost locked out, and you're just going to pulse. So it's going to be one, two, three, and I just want a real quick pulse. It's not anything like full, not going all the way down and all the way up. Think like moving two or three inches and that mid range, and you're just going to pulse in there. You're gonna do that 20 times, all right? Um, and then once you have that done, you're gonna do, go to your dumbbells. Yeah, so if you check out Shannon, she's just sitting there pulsing for 20 reps, go ahead and relax, because it's gonna burn. And then you're gonna come grab your dumbbells, you're gonna get in that same stagger stance, and you're gonna do some snappy hips. So if you guys check her out real quick, she's gonna do that same stagger stance, she's just gonna go hands to knees and snap back up. Boom. 10 quick on one leg, 10 quick on the other. The faster you can move on these demo deadlifts, the better. We're just trying to pump through, okay? And then when you finish that, if you have a timer, awesome. I'm gonna call out every like 30 to, or 15 to 30 seconds. You want a minute rest. No more than a minute rest between rounds. We're gonna do this for three rounds. So 20, 20 minute rest, 20, 20 minute rest, 20, 20 done. Any questions, comments, or concerns on this? Everyone have something set up? Jen, if you're gonna do it with that box, just make sure that box doesn't slide backwards. All we're looking for is that we can put pressure into the thing behind us. Um, shins stay vertical, feet stay close. So feet should be together um, and don't fall over. Okay, we get on this. Uh, this shouldn't take more than 10 minutes to get this done. So I'm gonna have a 10 minute clock at 10 minutes, regardless of where we're at, we're gonna be done with it. Um, we're gonna start with those demo deadlifts. If no one has any questions, again, this should burn. This should feel like we're pumping a lot of blood into the muscle. We'll talk about this afterwards if it didn't and what we could have done better. But here we go. We're gonna start this party in 10 seconds. Yeah, hi, Jane. Three, two, one, and go. Just that mid-range, 20 pulses. Keep those feet nice and together, knees pushed together. Kind of like the worst squat possible. Maddie, get your feet closer together and keep that chest up. Think, think uh, less chest down, more, more chest up. There we go. 20 reps there, that mid-range squat. Should feel like we're getting a nice burn in there. And those dimmel deads, 10 per leg. Just real quick. And then a minute rest, we're at 50 seconds right now.
We're at a minute 15 at this point, so it should be a nice little rest. That should be a nice little burn in there, guys. If you're like, man, that didn't hurt at all on those um, sissy squats, go ahead and grab a kettlebell or dumbbell and hold it up at that chest. It may also help you keep your chest up a little higher if you want to, if you want to get nasty. We're at a minute 30. Remember, one minute rest, so for a minute, whenever you finish, we're going to add a minute of rest in there. We're at a minute 45. Some of you guys should be starting that second round of sissy squats. Keep those feet close together. Basically feet touching, uh, knees touching, just real quick pulsing. We're at the two minute mark. Two and a half minutes at this point. Knocking through those dimble devils quick, quick, guys. Just real quick down up. Trying to move fast. You can bend your knees a little bit on those dimbles. Yeah. Yeah. They're not RDL, so you can have a little bit of a knee bend on those dimble deadlifts. I think half of a regular deadlift for dimble deadlifts is what we're looking for. Right. Yeah, we have one more round of this, guys. We're at the three minute mark, three minute mark right now. Shake your legs out. Should feel quite, quite a bit of blood pump in there. We're at the 315. Remember, take that full minute of rest. We're at 3.30 right now. Keep that mid-range. Don't extend either hip or knee all the way on either side. Kind of try to stay in that, that no rep range is what we'll call it, the no rep range. 20 pulses straight into those staggered dimbles. Well done, guys. Everyone's finishing it up. Finish those demos. Once you're done, guys, breathe. Shake your legs out. You know, move around a bit. They should feel like there's a whole bunch of blood in there. Once I see everyone done, I'm going to Unmute folks, we're gonna, we're gonna check in before we move on to the abs. See, it only took like five minutes. It's beautiful. You guys are great. Um, how's everyone feeling, guys? Emily feeling pretty good? Thumbs up. Uh, Sarah, how you feeling? Good, good. Um, Jen, how'd that feel? I'm winded. Winded, how the legs feel? A little, a little pumped? A little bit, yes, yeah, especially in the hips. Cool. That's exactly what we're looking for. Hip, hip, hip and knees, kind of quad pump. Yeah, you won't feel them as much. Just a lot of hip stuff. Crystal, feeling pretty good? Um, good, good. Maddie, Scott, all feeling pretty good. A little pump there and give you guys a little bit of a break. So, guys, that's, that's the lower body stuff. Andrea, looking, everyone's looking and feeling good. Okay. You're all muted again. All right. So that's, that's the, the lower body, little hypertrophy, little joint health. You should feel like your legs have a whole bunch of blood in them, uh, mainly in, in the hips, maybe in the quads a little bit from those, those uh, sissy squat pulses. Um, but that's going to keep your hip healthy and, and make it feel a little bit better tomorrow. When we get done with everything, we'll move through some range of motion stuff that'll make it feel really good tomorrow. But now we're going to play around with the, the midline strength. Now, like I said, I don't think people train their, their, their abdomen and their midline correctly. 
um, the most powerful contraction is uh, isometric and stabilization of the ab abs. And they also do way too many reps if you, if you want to have like strong abs. All right. Um, so we're going to, we're, instead of going into like hypertrophy and joint health, which is kind of what we're doing with abs anyway, we're, I'm going to teach you guys how to train um, your abs a little bit better for overall strength, overall function when we're, when we're lifting things and actually to help it translate more into your lifts. Doing 200 ab mat sit-ups, well, we may give you a little bit better of a, a six pack, doesn't really translate, translate as well to like a snatch or a clean or, or a back squat as, as like a seated good morning or what you're gonna kind of play around with this stuff. Same thing, like 200 ab mat sit-ups doesn't really translate into a heavy barbell because you're, you're not doing 200 reps with a heavy barbell generally, you're doing like five to 10 and so we need to teach those abs to contract maximally and as, as a group. So here's what we're gonna need for this next part. You're going to need um, anything that you can hold up over your head that's as heavy as you can find and still lock out well. Like think um, like if, if you can have a barbell or, or a barbell with a little bit of weight or some dumbbells. Um, Cause these ab reachers are, are, if I'm laying down on my back, all we're literally gonna do is try to reach towards the ceiling and reach towards the ceiling. And we need it to be heavy because what we're trying to do is maximally contract those abs down to our, our hips. And I'll have Shannon show these in a second. And then the next one, it's going to feel really weird and really funky, but it's an ab movement I've been playing around with for, uh, for a while lately. Um, yeah, Maddie, that works great. All you're literally going to do is find that center point of your abs. Basically think about if you had like a six pack, you have two, four, six. We're going to go in that center ab. You're going to set that weight across it, and you're going to basically suck your abs in and try to throw the weight off your abs by contracting. So you can kind of see from the side, I'm going to have the weight sitting on my stomach. I'm going to suck in a little bit. I'm going to try to throw the weight off my stomach by contracting my abs, like pushing away. Okay. And you're on your back, you're laying on your back here. And then once you boom, push it off, you're going to hold that contraction for a second and then relax back down and then boom, contract those abs maximally for a second and then come back down. I'm going to have Shannon show these real quick. So she's going to uh, lie on her back. You can do this. Um, if you can do, if you have a plate, if you have like a 45 pound plate, awesome. If you have a dumbbell, it works great. Really, whatever is going to be able to sit on your abs and be a little bit of weight. Any questions on that? It's going to feel really funky and really awkward. That's fine. It'll make you stronger. Yeah, you do the reachers first. You can do it with a plate. So you're going to lay on your back, and she's going to have her. This setup is beautiful. This is perfect. And all she's gonna do is basically try to reach as close to my hands as possible with contracting. So you, you can actually have your shoulders come off the ground as far as you can and then come back right back down and then straight back up as far as you can and then back down and then straight up and back down. And that's what I call reachers. You're only gonna do eight of them. That's why they need to be heavy, all right? So you're gonna reach, hold, and then come back down. Reach, hold, come back down. And we're gonna try to teach those abs to boom, contract maximally under this load. Any questions? So what's gonna happen is you're gonna do eight of those then you're going to flip the plate around, see how she has it on the abs here, and she's going to throw it off her abs and hold that top contraction and come back down. And throw it off her abs and then bring it right back down. All right, and you're going to do 10 of those. And then you're going to rest a minute. We're going to do four rounds of that. So eight, 10, rest a minute for four rounds. Yes. Any questions on that? Comments, concerns, anything that you, that's kind of confusing on those things? Yes, Jen, that is a very valid concern. Um, don't poop your pants. Squeeze your butt cheeks, okay? Um, th these, are, these are a weird contraction, um, but I, I promise they will, they will help in the long run for moving well, okay? Again, this should be as heavy as you can find. Um, I've had people do these reachers with up to like 155 pound barbells. Uh, so it should be like you're really trying to fight against that weight up top, okay? Um, I'm gonna start the clock again. Hopefully this doesn't take more than 10 minutes. It shouldn't. You should be able to move through this pretty quickly. Again, I'll count the 15 and 30 so you guys can kind of know where you're at. Um, and I'll be watching. I'll make corrections as we go. If we're all ready, we're going to start in 10 seconds. Here we go. In three, two, one, and go. Reach up, back down, reach up, back down. Eight of them. So Andrea, try the yeah, less with the shoulders and more with the abs. Like you're trying to almost like reach towards the ceiling and get, get those hands as close to the ceiling as possible. Then you have eight of those. Go ahead and set that weight on your stomach and launch it off and hold. Crystal, a little more hold at the top on that. So when you flex those abs, think about contracting and holding that ab for a second. So it's a flex, hold, 
back down. Flex, hold, back down. We're at 50 seconds here. We're at the one minute mark. Mm -mm. Yeah. So guys, make sure when you're doing when you're doing the reachers on this next round, you're actually like pulling your shoulders off the ground. You're literally trying to get whatever is in your hand as close to the ceiling as possible. If you're sitting all the way up, it means you're not using something that's heavy enough. Try to find something a little bit heavier. If you don't have anything heavier, uh, make do this week and, and just remember like we're gonna try to try to get as heavy as possible on this. We're at the 130 mark, so you should be in that that rest period at this point. Um, don't be an overachiever. Take that minute of rest. We're at that 145 mark. I think the fastest I saw someone get done was right around like a minute 50. So if that's where you're at, we're at a minute 50 right now. Should be about getting ready to get started again. And at the two minute mark, a lot of you guys should be starting here. Really try to reach to the ceiling as high as you can. If you feel like you're sitting up all the way, maybe you know, find a small child that weighs quite a bit. Should be a fast sit up and hold for a second. We're really trying to get that maximal contraction out of the abs and stabilize. Then we're gonna do those ab plate pushes, we're trying to throw that weight off our stomach as hard as we can with our abs and holding that contraction up top. Suck it back in, throw it off. I told you, this one's super awkward. You feel just like a real big dum-dum when you're doing these because they're really weird. Um, and people give me weird looks when I do them especially. Uh, but I, I promise this is a great way to train your abs to maximally contract and stabilize for those one rep maxes, two rep maxes, or even uh, as you're tired in the workout. Guys, we're in that, we're, we're at it 310 right now. We're at it 310. I give that minute of rest. We're gonna do two more rounds of this. Hopefully everyone's abs are feeling great. Uh, Jen, I'm hoping and praying you haven't pooped your pants yet. I mean, if you, you know, I'm, I'm in a wheelchair, so I'll, I'll be right there with you if, I, if I'm not careful. We're at three and a half minutes, guys. Should we get ready to start that, that third round? We're at 340. Don't reach forward, reach straight up. Try to get that plate as close to the ceiling as possible or whatever you're reaching for. We're at that 350 mark. Really reach, really fast contraction sitting up. You can go slow back. If you're using something that's super light and you're not feeling these, think about trying to reach up as fast as you can and then go slow back down. Fast up, slow back down, really forcing that isometric, uh, or that, uh, not isometric, but um, eccentric contraction on those. And then hard throw with the stomach. These are also good practice if you get punched in the stomach a lot. I mouth off to Shannon quite a bit, so I get punched in the stomach fairly often. Uh, I deserve it. Kevin. Joking, joking. We're at four minutes and 40 seconds on these guys, end of round three. We're at 450, guys. We have one more round of these, and then we have isometric stuff to do at the very end of this. We're at five minutes. We're at the 515 mark, 515. Some of you guys should be getting ready to start again. Five thirty mark. Most of you guys, almost all of you guys should be going, get those big reaches in. 
Fast contraction up. Can you get me a pad? Guys, finish that up. Get round, get through each of those rounds. That fourth round is over. If you're done, go ahead and relax for a second. Your abs should be feeling pretty, pretty, pretty good right now. That's a little bit of the ab strength stuff, guys. Um, real quick, are there any questions, comments, concerns about that method of training your abdomen? Like why, why it works a little better, why we like to see that a little bit more? Any questions at all? How often, how often can we do this? Oh, how often can, so Jen's question is how often can you, can you do this? Um, I like to see people, if, if they're my lifters specifically, if I have power lifters or weight lifters, I like to see them train this kind of ab stuff at least twice a week. Now, also, I'm not saying never do the 200 sit-up thing. You can do that for sure, but just like you wanna have like 20 plus minute workouts every once in a while, we wanna see those large groupings of abdominal work every once in a while. It shouldn't be the main focus of our, our ab work. So like two, week, two days a week, if you really wanna get nasty, get three days a week, just same thing as everything else, listen to your body on that kind of stuff and, and, and start building up into it don't don't go magically into like training this five days a week me personally i do app stuff like this still two days a week and i feel like that's plenty considering that all the other all the other stuff we do in crossfit and lifting also teaches us to brace this is just a little bit more specific into teaching us how to brace powerfully Does that makes sense guys any other questions on that stuff feeling pretty good you guys all look super happy like there's not a single smile amongst you which is great i love it like um this you should take this stuff very seriously awesome all right um we're gonna move into the isometric stuff and, and this is uh, intro to isometric stuff as we progress with this kind of class stuff and as we get to see this a little bit more um i may throw a little bit different of ab stuff with you, to you a little bit more activity but this first one is a banded overhead hold um so what's this gonna be if you have a band awesome if you don't um, what you're actually going to do is take a very lightweight, a very, very lightweight on this, and I'll, and I'll show you what we're going to do with that. So this band's going to be attached to a rig or whatever you have over your head. It should be um, over head level. So it should be definitely like, this is a good height. She's going to face away from the rig. She's going to have, she's going to walk out so she feels a ton of tension on that band. And then she's going to close that rib cage down into a hollow position. All right, and she's gonna to try to really brace, if you guys can check her out, really brace here. And she's gonna to try to prevent that from happening. She's gonna hold that for 30 seconds. So whatever you feel like is gonna be difficult for 30 seconds, awesome there, okay? So we're really trying to, again, have something pulling on the joint of the shoulder and brace against it by flexing down with the abs. Uh, the other way to do this, if you have a light weight, you're gonna lay on your back and you're gonna lift yourself up like you're doing a hollow position and hold that off the ground for as long as you can. That's why it needs to be super light. Uh, very similar to the reachers, but now we're gonna go overhead and now we're gonna pull our shoulder blades off the ground and hold this with a little bit of weight. Okay, a little bit of weight if you don't have a band to attach to anything. You're gonna do that for 30 seconds. Once you do that for 30 seconds, we're gonna do a reverse hyper leg swing. So this is, you don't really need any equipment. You just need something to, to brace yourself against. Um, if you have a band and you can do this against a band, awesome. But all it's going to be is we're going to try to, when we swing our leg forward and try to close our chest down, and when we try to swing our leg backward, we're trying to open our chest back up. And what we're really focusing on is not hyperextending backwards. So when we swing, swing our leg back, we're going to open our chest up, we're going to stay tight here. So it's a swing and close, swing and open, swing and close, swing and open. And when we swing and open, if you don't have a band, hold it there for a second. Man, I got to stop letting that run. Hold it open for a second, and then swing it through hard. So it's open and close with that leg swing. And what we're really focusing on here is, is pulling with our, our low back and, um, and our abs. So if you guys check her out, she's gonna open up, and then she's gonna swing and close. Open up, swing and close. And so if you, and the more and more you can let that be natural and let it swing, good. If you can do it against a band, you're gonna attach the band to your heel, and so it's pulling on the swing back. So if we can throw another band on yours. Yeah, 
low, I think like ankle height. She's gonna face the rig, that band's gonna go across the back of her heel, and she's gonna do those same leg swings. But now she has a little tension on her, on her leg to pull against. Okay, so if you have a band, do that, it works really well. Um, again, these reverse, uh, reverse hyper is great for like low back problems and uh, like glute hammy work, um, but these are also a great way to do it. They're not as good as a full reverse hyper, um, but they will do the job. Any questions on that stuff, guys? So we're gonna do 30 seconds of one, 15 seconds of rest, 30 seconds of the other, 15 seconds rest, and we're gonna to try to make it through eight rounds of that. Wait, did I do that rounds right? Sorry, I wrote eight rounds. I didn't mean eight rounds. We're gonna to try to do six rounds of that for the time, time frame. I don't know why I wrote eight. My brain must have had a brain fart at that point in time. We're gonna do six rounds, six rounds of this. Um, yeah, Shannon, do you wanna demonstrate the, you wanna grab like a, a five or 10 pound plate and demonstrate the, uh, the or not plate, sorry, dumbbell, and demonstrate the alternative to this, uh, the first one? Yeah. So all she's gonna do, yeah, she's, she's gonna lay on her back. You guys can check her out, drop the screen down. She's gonna lay on her back, she's gonna hold this overhead, and then she's gonna pull her shoulder blades off the ground, okay? And she, let's keep your hands a little bit lower, so out here. And she's gonna try to hold this. This is the advanced version where she's actually holding the hollow. If this is a little too hard, drop the feet and just hold the arms up, okay? And you're gonna hold that for 30 seconds. Think about trying to reach to the wall behind you and really hold that weight a little bit. Does that make sense, Sarah? And like, that's, that's a five pound dumbbell. They're, it's really hard, so go really light on that, okay? Cool. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? So um, with, with Maddie, I see Maddie and, and Andrea trying to hold the band overhead and pulling it. You really need to have that some kind of tension backwards. So if you see Shannon's, she's not just holding the band overhead. The band's actually attached to the rig and it's pulling her backwards. So if you can't attach the band to something that pulls you backwards, you can close it into the door, but I'll, I'll get you a little bit closer so you can see this from the side. All right, if you, so if you check her out from the side, you're gonna see that that band is actually pulling her backwards and then she's closing that, those abs down. So you can close your band in, into the top of a door or you can attach it to a dumbbell over your head or whatever you really wanna do, but we're gonna hold that there, okay? If you can't attach it to anything, grab that light weight and do the alternative. Yeah, Scott, beautiful, love that, okay? So it's gonna be 30 seconds on, 15 seconds rest of those, 30 seconds on, 15 seconds rest of the reverse leg swings. Um, Remember, please do not hyperextend. Like, I don't wanna see a scorpion on that swing back. Like, only go as far as you can while keeping this tight. It's gonna be a real short range of motion there. Um, and then uh, from there, if you can attach to a band, great, if not. So 30 seconds on, 15 seconds rest, we're gonna go six rounds. Questions, comments, concerns before we get started? Crystal's looking real excited, I can see it. Her, her posture is just so pumped up for this. Get it, get it pumped up. Pumps. No, I'm sorry, bad jokes. We're gonna start in 10 seconds. That real good hollow position. Here we go, in three, two, one, and go. Hold that hollow down, think about squeezing gut, butt, and legs. Squeeze those butt cheeks together just like you have a fart. Scott, go ahead and close that rib cage down. You're a little here, I wanna see a little bit more here. Yeah, a little bit more of that hollow. We're at 20 seconds, guys. 10 more seconds here. Really hold that hollow position. And three, two, one, and rest. We got 15 seconds. You're gonna go to those reverse hyper leg swings. Yeah, five seconds. Three, two, one. And go, guys, good question from Shannon. Go one leg completely this round and we'll switch to the other leg next round. So one, either right leg or left leg this round and we'll go to the other leg the next round. Keep those act tight. Really about squeezing the butt on the back end. If you have that band, a band against the heel is a great way to add these in. 
15 seconds. Three, two, one, and rest. Guys on those, if you have the band, please use it. It's a lot better. If you don't have the band, just really focus on squeezing that butt cheek and that low back at the top of the back of the backswing. So that backswing should be squeezed really hard. All right, guys, back to those overhead holds in three, two, one, and hold. Squeeze that rib cage down to your hips like you're trying to close it off, creating that hollow position. And hold, don't let it move, don't let it move. Stabilize against it. Andrew, try to keep those, try to pick those shoulder blades off the ground just a little bit more so you're here. I want you to try to pull your shoulder blades off the ground a little bit. There we go. You guys are at 20 seconds. Hold against that band. Three, two, one, and rest. Going back to those leg swings, switch legs. So if you did the right leg the first round, do the left leg the second. Now start in five, three, two, one, and go. And Andrew, let that leg swing forward too. Don't just pull back. We're trying to, yeah, that full swing. Close that rib cage down and swing forward. Open that rib cage up on the way back. Shan's doing a great job of it. If you're kind of checking her out, you can see what she's up to. You guys got 10 seconds. Five, three, two, one, and rest. Now you may feel these in your bats a little bit, low back. Five seconds, guys, we'll go back to those overhead holds. And go. Squeeze that rib cage down, hold that overhead position. We're 10 seconds in guys, keep holding. And five, three, two, one. Guys going back into those leg swings. Here we go. And three, two, one, and go. Why? Three of each. No, three rounds of each. This is your, this is the end of the third round. You guys got ten seconds. And go ahead and rest, guys. Sorry. We're going to go back into that overhead hold for round four and go. If you guys looked at the screen, you guys saw me typing, then you should have a whole bunch of chat messages. We're gonna not quite run out of time for this. We're going a little bit longer than I wanted to. So I've put in the 
um, comment section or the chat section. You guys got 10 seconds left in this whole um, chat section. Um, the regain range of motion movements I would like for you guys to do. And I'll leave the chat open for a little bit longer. Go ahead and rest so you guys can see it. Okay, write it down. A little bit of a Ramwad piece type thing to get some range of motion back into it, followed by some squats and deads. There we go. Leg swings around four and two, one, and go. Really squeeze that butt when that heel's behind you. When you kick back with that heel, squeeze that butt. Jen, I'm loving that torso flexion. Flexion and extension of that torso looks great. Also looks like you're at a really slow metal concert because you're head banging. It's pretty cool. You guys got 15 seconds. Three, two, one, and rest. That was the end of round five. We have one more round, guys. Last round of this. Here we go. Overhead hold. And go. Yeah, let me count them. Oh. Maybe this is round five. Maybe I miscounted. Shannon's informed me that she's she has not done her legs equally after this round, so we may have to go one more round. Ten seconds, guys. Three, two, one, and rest. Go into those leg swings and three, two, one, and go. Closing that rib cage down at the top. Open it back up. And rest. Now is our last round, guys. My apologies. Three, two, one, and go. Overhead hollow hold. Keep holding last round for these guys. Three, two, one, and rest. One more leg swing. Start in 10 seconds, this last leg swing. Perfect timing. Three, two, one, and swing. And guys, it's not always gonna be abs and lower body. Next week, maybe upper body and lower body, but generally it's gonna be some form of upper, lower, or midline strength. I'm gonna probably hammer at midline strength as much as I possibly can, because I think people need to learn a little bit more about it. Um, but we'll close out after this. You guys have 10 seconds. Five, three, two, one, and rest. And time, guys, that's all she wrote. You guys should feel, feel like you got a little bit of a pump session, abs a little sore, legs a little sore. Guys, look at, take a look at the chat. There's a, um, a regain range of motion from movements, pigeon, runner's lunge, upward, downward dog, a little bit of frog, frog pose, and then 10 slow squats, 10 slow deadlifts. I'll give you guys a minute to kind of write that down. Um, also, I wanna, so you don't have to keep 
put anything in there. I'm gonna unmute everyone. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and say them. Um, and uh, we'll end it here this week. Next week may be a little different. Um, if you have any uh, questions, comments, or concerns, you don't want to voice here or some um, feedback on the class, my email is right there for everyone. Go ahead and write that down as well. And you guys can shoot me an email about like, hey, I like this. Hey, I didn't like this. Hey, I didn't understand why we did this. Thanks, Shannon. Yeah. Shannon, Shannon's getting super jacked. Thank you. I'm going to give you, I'm going to leave this open for a minute. I'm going to give you this. When they're done writing it down, if you can shut it down. Hey, Scott. See you guys next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. This thing is cool. Sarah, you're a good student. <laughs> Thanks. Notes on notes on notes on notes. You keeping them in line over there? Shannon? What? Me keeping Kevin in line? Keeping Kevin in line? Trying to. This whole quarantine thing is just like marriage counseling 101. <laughs> He's just there all the time. It's great. It's like, is he going away? No. <laughs> and I'm like, I need you to not be in my line of sight right now. Love you, mean it. Come back later. <laughs> but like right now, just go hide in the closet. It's fine. I think that's a good plan. Yeah. Closet time for Kevin. Working out has become our outlet now. That's good. But how are you? Hanging in there? Yeah. Knee okay? Yeah. Just here with my dogs and my cat. Party. I know. It's a good time. I'm really bummed the games got postponed. I know. I'm still but, actually torn up about that. We'll see what happens. Maybe it'll be bigger and better. There you go. Give me more time. Exactly. Give me more bigger time. And get better. Yeah. <laughs> oh. All right. I'm going to go do some more yard, more yard work. Do it. Do it to okay. it. All right. We'll see you All later. Right. See you guys later. Bye. Sarah, are you done copying it down? Hey, Sarah just went inside for a second. Okay, hey. I'll sign off then. Oh, okay, yeah, I can sign her off. No, Thanks, no, no, no worries, just wanted to make sure she was done. Oh, for sure, she is. Okay, cool, you guys take care.